Hello and welcome to the Coaching for Self-Belief podcast with Andy and Pete. So Andy, what have we got this week? Well Pete, um, the other day I was coaching this gentleman at table tennis who um, I wasn't sure whether I was helping him to focus or I was a source of interference for him. Um, so as we walked to the, the table tennis arena where I do my coaching, um, he was a little bit uptight and uh, you know I, could, I had this sense around me that he wasn't particularly up for his lesson. Um, so when we started hitting a few balls in the warm up, he was missing uh, a lot and um, knowing him quite well and knowing what I know, I thought well, what I've got to try and do is help him relax a little bit more. So I, I started to talk to him about real tennis, which is starting soon with COVID sort of um, becoming less and less. So I said to him, you know, when, when you're starting real tennis and he couldn't really answer me and his ball and his shots were getting worse. And, and then he turned around and he said, uh, I can't do two things at once, Andy. You're, you're, um, you're, you're making me do this, you know, and he was huffing and puffing sort of thing. And I thought, oh, dear. Um, so that intervention didn't work. So then I said, OK, um, Mike, is there anything that we've done in the past that could help you to focus just as we're warming up? You know, and I suggested a few things that had worked for him. Um, and no, no, I can't think of anything. So we carried on and it, it was not really getting any better. So we stopped up, we stopped after one and I said, Mike, I've got, I've got an exercise that might help. Would you be interested? And he said, yeah, yeah, okay. I said, well, when I send you each ball, just say yes or no. Do you see the label on the table tennis ball? And he said, yeah, okay. So I fed him the balls. Yes, no, yes. Yes, yes. And very quickly, he started to find his shot again. Okay. Before we did this, I did say to him, this exercise is designed to try and quiet your mind. He knew his mind was busy. Mm. Uh, I said, and the body knows how to do it. I said, what we've got to do is just, or what you've got to do is see if you can quieten your mind and allow your body to play. And that's a big step for him, but it's something we've done in previous weeks. So he understands the concept, the idea. Um, it's just every week he turns up, he turns up with a very busy mind, high expectations, he quick, quickly judges his performance, um, and then he's looking for a solution. Hmm. And so, so that's how it went. So yeah, after a while, it worked. And at the end of the session, from, from hitting shots all over the place, we're having backhand and forehand rallies. Um, and then it got me thinking about this thing that we unintentionally can do is which is um get in the way uh, 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 well we can sort of make our players uh, more clumsy and uh, cause interference for them but unknowingly or mm. unintentionally so you know that's a nice story because it shows that that uh, the student was creating his own interference he was he was coming to the lesson in in a state of mind that was perhaps less than useful yes. and yeah. and uh, and he had judgment and so he had his own interference but also that that you were aware that something that you said created even more interference for him yeah yeah so uh, you know uh, we can't stop uh that happening really it's it's going to happen that perhaps some of the interventions that, that we choose actually cause more problems than, than solutions as coaches, yeah. that, that we create the interference. And, and actually, that's, that's how the whole uh, exploration from Tim, Timothy Galway and, and the inner game began, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, Tim, Tim recognised that people were giving themselves instructions as, as methods of control uh, over their games, you know, you know, they were instructing themselves, which the coach couldn't see. So there's that internal dialogue going on. You know, step mm. into the ball, keep your wrist firm, make sure you follow through. Um, and and so where where did those internal instructions come from that that he was noticing? They they came from actually from him. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because yeah. he he'd spent time telling them what to do, and then they internalised that dialogue and it became just something that got in the way yeah 
So um, I did reflect on that session and I did think rather than offer an intervention straight away to try and relax him, you know, try and relax this person, I could have said, what, what have we done in previous weeks, Mike, that's worked for you? So it would have been a very open question, which would have allowed him a little bit more exploration. I think, uh, again, with the inner game solutions, the, the triangle of, of awareness, choice and trust that Tim Galway came up with as you know, a, a basic thing, uh, kind of a framework that can create an environment where there's less interference. Um, and the choice that you mentioned there, I, I think is, is really useful to um, you know, ask a pupil right at the beginning, what would you like to work on? You know, how are you? Um, that then settles them down a little bit. It, it does just yeah. simply doing that quietens their mind a little bit. And then if, if they choose what they want to do to begin with, then focus follows that. Absolutely. Because, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. because they've chosen it, so they're interested in it. And if you're interested in something, then you focus. And if you focus, then there's no interference. So what, what become clear when you said that, Pete, was how much uh, perhaps I could just keep in the back of my mind the ACT, the Awareness, Choice and Trust Triangle. Because having done it for so many years, you do tend to forget these things. But actually, that's quite nice. Because if I'd gone straight to choice, I could have said that question. Uh, what what's worked for you in the past that you'd like to put your attention on? Um, so yeah, that's great. I think sometimes we rush to try and help people, you know, and I could tell he was uptight and he was trying hard, judging himself, all of that stuff. Yeah, with with the best of of, of intentions, you know, we we jump in trying to help, and and that can create interference just by itself. Yeah, because we're we're giving people stuff to think about that that then gives them overload, and and then. Then the judgment comes in and they start going down that spiral. <laughs> yeah, so the choice is linked very much to sort of the, the person being in charge, you know. Like you said, you know, what would, what would you like to do today? What, how's it going, you know? And then that, that engagement happens then and then the person's able to choose. Mm. So it's, it's uh, for me, it's a key ingredient to helping to create an environment where where there's less interference mm, absolutely yeah yeah and, and various right, ways to do that yeah and I, I think that's that's the genius of of tim galway um to kind of crystallize some that framework that if if you have you know awareness choice and trust non-judgmental observation mm. and focus is is the goal to help someone to find some focus on whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, if you have that in, in mind, in, in the background of what you're doing as a coach all the time, that's, that's the magic. That's what, that's what reduces the interference. Absolutely. And then when, when interference does come, whether it's f from within the pupil or whether it's something that I've said that, that then creates the furrowed brow and, and, and I see it oh, oh, you know, what I said created that interference. Then, then I can go back to the, the choice, uh, check the focus, you know, where's your attention? Where, where, what would you like to do next? And, and then that choice kind of yeah. press, presses the reset button. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in this instance, um, it was evident how, how much focus was almost the bridge to this person being more relaxed and quieting self one, the, the internal dialogue going on. Um, so, so focus really is, is that if we can help focus uh, instead of create interference, and we've got this model for it, uh, like um, a barometer where one, one end is focus and the other end is interference, um, and just being aware of everything we do or say will put somebody or somewhere on that dial, either at focus or at interference. Mm. Um, maybe that's something coaches could look out for. For sure, yeah. Have have that dial on your on your coaching dashboard, yeah. and just yeah. always uh, be aware of of what state your pupil is in. Are are they focused? Which looks like you know relaxation around the eyes, uh, interest, enjoyment, relaxation generally in the body as, as they're performing a task. Yeah. Um, 
a quiet mind, not much going on, but a focused mind as well. Yes, yeah, a, a definite uh, look to it. Uh, versus the interference where the, the furrowed brow comes in, the over-trying, the, the yeah. tension. Yeah. Um, becomes yeah. actually really easy to spot, doesn't it? It does, it does. So maybe that's the takeaway this week. You know, mm. it, it, Just be aware of everything you say and you do and how you are with your clients. Um, just, just have a little uh, check whether you're creating focus for them or you're creating unintentionally interference. Um, just see what's happening. Yeah, and then if you do spot that you've created interference in the pupil, then uh, go to choice and see what happens if you just step back and say, "Well, okay, you know what's happening for you now? Where would you like to, to what would you like to look at now?" And then that choice might help to to reset and yeah. create the focus again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Very good. So have some fun with that and uh, yeah. see you next time.